In this video we will go into details of the Topspin Plot Editor. We will also show you how to generate electronic figures that you can include in manuscripts and presentations. Generating electronic output is much more customizable when using the formatting functions of the Plot Editor. However, crude figures can be made from content in the data window. The main menu has a Publish option. In the flow bar under Publish you will find the PDF pull-down menu. Open this menu with the small downward pointing triangle. Here you can select the format for the output image. The main choices are PDF or PNG files. The Other Formats option will allow you to specify image formats that include TIFF, JPEG or GIF files. The options that include Data Directory will put the generated files in the processing folder of the dataset you are working on. This is not necessarily the most convenient location, and the options that do not include data directory will allow you to specify the location the output file will be written in to. We recommend using this option. Let's write the current spectrum as a PNG file and save the file to the desktop. As you can see the image created is an exact copy of the data window. This includes the grid if it's shown, the y-axis, peak labels and integral curves and values. The image is OK for some use but it is fairly crude and there is limited formatting control. To have more control of the output, the publish menu can be accessed when the plot editor is active. We will discuss this later in this video. To open the plot editor, you would normally click on the plot tab of the data window once you have completed processing your NMR spectrum. As we saw in the basic training video on plotting, the plot editor has a main window that shows the current page layout. To the left is a control panel that will change context when elements of the layout are selected. The default layout, defined by the experiment, will usually be active and the chemical shift range of the dataset you were working on should be shown. For Proton the 1D underscore H layout is the default. Let's take a closer look at the layout, but first we can expand the window by collapsing the file browser by clicking on the button shaped as a computer monitor in the display section of the main control panel. This button acts as a toggle to restore the file browser. You could also toggle the file browser panel by typing Ctrl D. There are three basic elements on this page layout. At the top there is the spectrum title box. This is the label that was entered in the icon NMR title field when the experiment was run. Below that is the parameter table. This contains information about how the dataset was run and processed. It is important to include these parameters when you are making a record of the sample and the experiment. However, for manuscript and presentation figures, the parameters are usually unnecessary. Note how the control panel changes when any of the elements are selected. The control panel allows you to make changes to the content of each element. For fields like the title and parameters you will find choices for the font type and size. Formatting options and size and position of the element. The spectrum is shown in a separate element. The control panel for the spectrum has many components. There are three separate sub-panels that can be selected with the blue text lines at the bottom of the panel. This is a rather confusing configuration and not very intuitive. You will need to build up some familiarity with the plot editor before you get comfortable with the location of all the options. We will focus on the content of these sub-panels in a moment, but first let's cover some basics. Elements can be moved in the page layout by click, hold and dragging with the mouse. Elements can be resized by moving the mouse cursor to one of the green boxes and click, hold and dragging them to the new size. We will see that you can also define size and position of the elements in the control panel to give you more precise values. If you right-click on any element a pop-up menu is displayed. From here you can perform some operations which includes deleting the element. The layout menu can be accessed with the button to the right with the black triangle. This menu, which allows you to open existing layouts, can create a blank layout. Select, New, then answer the question to discarding the changes and the page layout to the right is now empty. The first thing you should do next is check the paper size under the print section. The default paper size is defined when you install Topspin. On the facilities computers the layouts defined in all common experiments is set to legal size paper. This is the paper size that is installed on all our printers. 
However, the default paper size for new layouts will be letter size paper. You can change this by clicking on the button to the right and selecting Page Setup. Here you can also set the page orientation to either landscape or portrait. This box can look a little different based on the type of printer you have installed on your computer. I am going to leave the paper size as letter, but remember if you are going to print with the facilities printers you need to select legal paper. The paper size does not matter if you are creating a layout to generate just electronic image files. However, you should consider the aspect ratio and page orientation to match the image you want to produce. Once you have a blank canvas to work on you can start adding elements. To do this, you need to select them from the two menus at the bottom of the main panel. The menu on the left, labeled, Standard, has various geometric shapes. They allow you to make creative annotations on the output. I am not going to demonstrate any of these functions. This can be done much easier in graphics programs like Illustrator or Inkscape and presentation programs like PowerPoint or Keynote. We recommend you use tools like these over what is included in Topspin. However, feel free to experiment with this aspect of the program. The menu to the right is labeled NMR. These elements are all relevant to data figures and information. The choice is fairly limited and many will never be needed by the average user. To add a 1D spectrum element you need to select it from the menu. When the menu panel closes, the mouse cursor will show a plus sign. Position the cursor at any point in the page layout. Then click, hold and drag the cursor to a second position and release the mouse button. This will create the spectrum at the position you started. Remember this element can be move and resized to give you the desired image, so you do not have to be careful during the initial insertion. As you can see the spectrum shown does not include any of the processing features like peak labels or integrals. These can be added and modified with the sub-panels. There are three different sub-panels for the 1D spectrum element. The order of the panels in the text line in the lower part of the panel changes based on which one is currently active, so this can be somewhat confusing. There is one sub-panel for peaks, integrals and placement. The second includes axes, grids, curve and plot limits. The last is for automation actions. This defines how Topspin loads the spectrum for output generated by the automation. This is something you do not have to be concerned about for layouts that you are going to interactively work with and we will not spend any time discussing the automation options. The first panel we will discuss is the axes, grid, curve and plot limits. When this sub-panel is open the curve option is at the top. This is for customizing the spectrum trace. The black box to the right opens a dialog panel that shows the available curve attributes. These include the color of the spectrum and the line style and thickness. Note that the default line thickness of 0.5 points looks great in the plot editor. However, on both printed and electronic output this value is too thin. For electronic output that creates bitmap images this can lead to the spectrum vanishing when a full page image is resized to a column of a journal article. Therefore, you should increase the thickness to one or two points and maybe even higher values if you are going to make drastic reduction of the image size. The fill option will make solid figures under the spectrum peaks and has very limited use and you will leave this set to unfilled most of the time. Next is the axes options. This section also has a color box next to the title that opens up an attributes panel. These attributes also include a color and line thickness choice. Again, the default thickness of 0.5 points should be increased. At the bottom you have control of the font style and size. The defaults are pretty small and for electronic images this should be increased. Note when you increase the font size the numbers may change on the axis to allow the larger digits to fit. This can be controlled with options shown later. The axes can be shown for the chemical shift, either above or below the spectrum and for the intensity scaling to the right or the left. Traditionally the chemical shift axis is presented on the bottom. Note this can be removed entirely from the spectrum. Remember that data without a scale is worthless, but if you are going to generate multiple spectra with the same scale and stack them later in a program like PowerPoint, having multiple axes are not necessary. Just be careful to produce images with the exact chemical shift range, so spectra can share a single axis accurately. 
The offsets from the graph allows you to move the spectrum away from the axes to give more space between the two sub-elements. Grid lines can be added to the output and their color and thickness can be set with the attributes panel. Grid lines will show at the major tick marks defined below. The plot limits are where you can set the chemical shift range. The two boxes besides the X show the downfield and upfield ends of the spectrum region that is included. The units here are ppm. The Y axis limits are much easier to set with the mouse scroll wheel or the controls on the main button bar so you do not have to change these values. A check mark in the scale bounding box will include the axes in the sizing of the element. This can make it a little easier to adjust the size in the next sub panel but it is not necessary to select. The draw box around option will show a box around the spectrum trace. The tick settings button will open a panel where you can control the spacing of the major and minor ticks that show on the axes. The major ticks include the numbers while the minor ticks are the smaller lines on the scale. Let's now focus our attention on the peaks and integral sub panel. To add peak labels to the spectrum you would click on the small box besides label under the peaks section. Note that adding the peak labels increased the height of the original 1D spectrum element size. For this reason, sizing of the spectrum element should be done after you added all the processing features to the spectrum. The marks option will put an additional line near the top of each peak. This can add to clutter so most of the time we would not recommend adding these marks. To the right is a box with two zeros. Clicking on this box brings up a dialog where you can specify the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. The box marked PPM is a pull-down menu where you can select the units for the peak labels. The choices are PPM, Hertz or the less common data points. PPM will help determine chemical shifts and Hertz are useful for measuring coupling constants. The annotations and positions options seem to have no effect in Topspin version 3.6, so you can ignore these. To the right of the peaks section title is a black box that opens a dialog with the peak label attributes. You can choose the color of the labels, the thickness and style of the label lines and the font style and size. Let's turn peak labels off for clarity as we move on to integrals. The two main options are the S-shaped integral curves and the value labels that show under the spectrum. You can include either one or both. The black box to the right of the integrals section title will open the attributes panel where you can change the color of both the label and the curve. The font style and size options are at the bottom of the panel. Leave the fill style to unfilled since this option obscures the spectrum trace. The limits button is for scaling of the curves. It is very difficult to work with these numbers, so you should adjust the scale with either the mouse scroll wheel or y-axis buttons in the main toolbar. Note that both of these scaling options are active on the spectrum trace by default. To switch to the integral curves you would first click on the box next to the use for shift scale. When this is checked the scaling tools work on the integral curves. You could also use the continuous offset tool to move the base of the integral curves off the spectrum baseline. Like with the peak labels, the number of digits for the integral values that come to the right of the decimal point can be set with the button that has the two zeros. The check box next to the above x axis will move the integral values to an area between the spectrum trace and the chemical shift scale. Note that when you toggle this you could lose the offset and scaling of the integral curves that you set earlier. The axis section of this sub-panel has limited use. Here you can change the scale from ppm to hertz or points. The define button allows you to set a specific scaling of the plotted result to the chemical shift or hertz range. There is very little reason for doing this since you can use the tools in Topspin to measure chemical shift differences or coupling constants. Printing out results and using a physical ruler is no longer a practical or necessary method. The same can be said for the show scaling info option. This lists the current ppm or hertz to centimeter ratio of the output. There is no reason to print out results to measure differences on paper. The placement section allows you to make precise settings for the dimensions and position of the element. They are both in centimeters with the first column representing the horizontal axis and the second column the vertical axis. However, the position coordinates are not set to a corner or center of the spectrum element. 
Watch as I set both dimensions to a small number and set the position to zero on both the x and y coordinates. This position is the lower right corner of the page, but it is unclear what part of the element is the actual corner. Therefore, you have to experiment with values for the position or move the spectrum with the mouse to the desired location. When you set the dimensions and position you should be aware of the printer margins on the page layout. These are the dashed lines along the edges of the page. For printed results anything outside this area could be clipped off. For electronic images anything in the white area of the page will remain visible. We recommend that you set the dimensions with values in this section and move the element to a position with the mouse. This will help with creating images with consistent sizing. One of the more useful features of the plot editor is that you can have more than one spectrum trace on the same layout. To do this, you would first adjust the features and region of the main spectrum. Then move up to the main control panel with the small blue triangle at the top. Then select 1D spectrum from the NMR elements and place the second spectrum trace to an area in the page layout. Now click into this spectrum element and modify it to the range you would like to display and the features you would like to add. Here we are going to expand on a smaller region so we can see and measure the coupling constants. We need to set the spectrum curve line thickness. Then we are going to add peak labels. Change the units to hertz. Change the number of decimal points. Now we can make any other size or position adjustments. The final layout is a 1D spectrum with an inset region showing peak labels in hertz. When you are finished adding features to the spectrum element you can return to the main control panel. You should save your new layout by clicking on the button next to the layout title and choosing Save, As. We allow users to save their custom layouts on the facility's computers. Always start the name with your initials so you and others can easily recognize the file. Saved layouts will not recall the chemical shift expansion so you will have to click into each region and set the limits each time you load in a new layout with multiple spectrum traces. Sending the result to the printer can be done by choosing print from the print menu as you saw with the default layouts in the basic training video. The publish menu can be used to create images with the same formatting of the layout. These reflect all the customizations you made. We are going to end this video with a short description on working with plot layouts that include spectrum traces for more than one sample or experiment. These are called stacked plots and they can be very difficult to work with in the Topspin plot editor. The easiest method for generating stacked plots is to first start with a main spectrum and build up additional spectra in the multi-display mode. This was covered in an earlier video and you can find it on our YouTube channel. Exit multi-display mode and open the plot editor. In the left-hand column, under the file browser find the small panel with the portfolio tab active. Click on the downward pointing black triangle to the right of the plot portfolio to open the drop down menu. Choose Load Collection from Multiplet Display Mode. This should load the spectra that were open in multi display mode. Then choose the layout menu and click on Open. Double click on the layouts.multi display folder. Then choose the 1D layout that shows the number of spectra that were included in your stack and click the Open button. The layout should include all the spectra in separate elements. Without clicking on any trace, the vertical scaling can be adjusted for all spectra. If you click on an individual spectrum you can edit just that trace. The sub-panels have full control on only the selected spectrum, so color and line thickness must be adjusted for each trace. The bottom spectrum will include the options for the chemical shift scale. The right side of the layout has a parameter element for each trace. These can be deleted to reduce clutter. This will conclude our video on using the plot editor and how to generate electronic images. These functions have many options and pose a challenge for every user. Please see the staff if you have any questions on how to generate the best output for your project. Thanks for watching.